Post-World War II in 1949, what would eventually become known as the Weapons Research Establishment was founded in South Australia. Its purpose was to test rockets and atomic bombs in a purpose-built town at Woomera. This was a joint venture between Australia and Britain involving defence personnel, engineers, scientists from both countries and as part of that collaboration to solve the detailed mathematical calculations needed to test the atomic bombs, the WRE had teams of women computers already working with mechanical analog computers but they needed to drastically increase their calculating capacity. John Ovenstone, the senior scientific officer at WRE, had worked on the CSIR Mark I at Sydney University and EDZAC at Cambridge, and he led the efforts to acquire an Elliott 402 from the Elliott brothers in the UK. The computer was heavily modified and became known as REDAC, the Weapons Research Establishment Digital Automatic Computer. REDAC started performing useful work in July 1956. I was born in Adelaide, and my first job was as a technician in training with the Postmaster General's Department in 1958, where I worked for two years when I got a cadetship from the Department of Supply, which is related to the Department of Defence, in 1960. And I did a four-year Bachelor of Engineering degree at the University of Adelaide. Subsequently, I worked at the Weapons Research Establishment in South Australia, which was also Department of Supply Operation WRE was long-range weapons research establishment that LRWE that got shortened later on to WRE. It was located in two, two parts. The range was located in the central desert of South Australia, located in what is now a town called Woomera. Woomera is an Aboriginal word meaning a throwing device, which Aborigines used to throw spears. The range crossed the desert, central desert of Australia all the way through South Australia and Western Australia, and it was possible to launch missiles to go right out of Australia into the Indian Ocean. The telemetry data was put on various formats, like particularly punch paper tape, a little bit of magnetic tape, and these were taken down into the WRE headquarters in Salisbury, where women, girls mostly, would use electromechanical calculators. I think they used to call them comptometers, and the girls who operated the computers were called computers. They'd actually been there since 1949, these women, and they knew that they needed human computers. At that point, there were no automatic computers available to them, and they employed women to do a lot of the very arduous manual processing of information. They were very skilled female mathematicians, in fact. Some of them have, have, were just out of school, and they, some of them were 18 years old. Some of them had some university training in mathematics, and they were supervised by Mary Whitehead, who had a degree in mathematics from the University of Melbourne, and she'd done some work in statistics, and then she was employed to supervise these human computers. At the beginning of the process, when they started in 1949, it could take up to 120 hours to reduce the information from one rocket test. They were using various hand-operated desk calculators. When Woomera was established, there was a vast array of equipment provided to operate the rockets, but also to film the rockets and then track the movement of them in the sky. And these staff, the, the women who were employed as human computers, were made familiar with, with all of this equipment. Uh, this was a, a, quite a big array of, of analog equipment initially and then gradually they had analog computers. When a rocket was sent off it was filmed and that from that film these women were employed to plot the telemetry of the progress of the uh, rocket. And it was all done manually on those electromechanical calculators before computers took over. REDAC, which stands for Weapons Research Establishment Automatic Computer, was a computer purchased by Weapons Research Establishment to, do, to replace the uh, computational work that were previously done by girls. Weapons Research Establishment at first attempted to design their own computer and build it, 
and they wanted to model it on SARAC. And that was called LEDAC, which is the Long Range Weapons Electronic Digital Automatic Computer. They started work on this. They were going to copy SIRAC and build their own computer. But this is at sort of 1950, 1951. But this proved too difficult. This project didn't seem to get very far. And the story of LEDAC then really doesn't make a lot of sense without mentioning John Lovenstone who was the big influence in this development. He was a young scientist in, in Australia. He, he did have experience at the CSIRO, and then he went to England to do his PhD under Douglas Hartree. John was given a PhD scholarship at uh, Cambridge University, where he came in touch with key people on EDSAC and Morris Wilkes and various other people, so that when he came back to Australia to Weapons Research Establishment and saw this uh, business of making their own, forcefully argued, that they should take an off-the-shelf computer instead. Because he was put in charge of taking an in a search investigation in the UK uh, for an off-the-shelf computer. There were many uh, computers that he did look at, but none of them were ready to ship. The closest one was a machine called the Elliott 402, and they were very cooperative with his approaches. And they agreed to build a, a bespoke version, which was become to be known as the 403, and later renamed when it was delivered as Redac. The Elliott 403 differed from the 402 by the modifications that Ovenstone requested, and these modifications were in the area of real-time input. The uh, machine was not intended for use for general purpose programming. It was intended to run in a dedicated way for processing the telemetry data coming down from the Woomera range. All of the data coming down from the range was initially recorded by analog means and had to be converted by digital analog converters. The speed of REDAC was significantly faster than the combined computational power of the electromagnetic machines that the girls operated. From the first times of these tests in 1949, it was taking hours to analyse the information, whereas by the time you have a digital computer, it was reducing information from several, several days and weeks down to less than a day to get the results. You could would then correct whatever was wrong with your test, you know, so much, much quicker. But the girls were still there at the time, but they, their task was shifted from the data conversion task to uh, more data prep. Many of the women who had a complete understanding of the statistics required for this process then transferred and became operators on the equipment. They were kind of essential to the process because they really understood the maths behind what they were doing. Because as you transition from doing it manually to, to the computer, they knew what, what they were trying to achieve with these statistics. Uh, I had worked out at weapons research. I think it was only about 16, what, 17 or something. I called everyone Mister. We were testing solid state propellants. We were the last building on the block in WRE. We were sort of seemed to be working on a terrific lot of statistics. I seem to be doing what they call inverting matrices quite by hand quite often. The girls were very conscious of, of, of what they were doing and tried to be as accurate as possible. Plus, the guys were just great. You know, they, there was no no nastiness or no, no no sexual things or anything like that. You know, it was all sort of stuff. It was a very good working environment. The computers were never a, a threat to my work. I, uh, I just progressed with them. So they were able to transition and, and become operators. The cameras, is that what, they were operated by women and they were working and living in Salisbury, but they would go up on site. And one of the things that they asked to be was to be familiar with all of the equipment that, that was producing the data. And so they went and they used the equipment on, at Woomera to see how this information was being achieved. So they had a complete understanding of what they were receiving back in Salisbury. And all of this data was collected as batches and sent by batch down to Adelaide at a later time. There was no real-time element to this processing. And as a consequence, uh, the data produced was only of kind of retrospective value, and not in any way designed to help with the missile itself. The, the, the real-time data that came from Woomera to, to the data processing center at Weapons Research Establishment had to be converted to a digital form. Some of that was done by the peripheral equipment that Ovenston had specified, and others were converted with the assistance of the women who were operating the comptometers. 
They were there to translate the information on the films into some sort of usable data that, that could then be analysed, and it was put on magnetic tape. And one of the main tasks of all the different data streams that were being recorded was to line them up in a time order. So they were up on site and they had rough conditions initially. They had to be in a separate compound. They were very worried about having these very quite young women on site in a very male environment. Well, of course, that like all women in the Australian public service at that time, they were only paid 75% of the rate of men on the same job. The women at uh, who were employed in the Australian Government Public Service at this point in time in the 1950s upon marriage were supposed to resign. They were no longer able to be employed full time. Mary Whitehead, who was um, in charge of this group, she joined the Public Service Association so that she could represent the, these women at the public service. This was a, a real problem until the mid-1960s when, when this marriage bar was completely changed. But what they did, in a sense, was they gave away the skill set of these women because they got married. REDAC uh, technology, it had a valve implementation for its logic. It had the very fragile delay line memory for its main memory. A CRT display was used to monitor the progress of the state of the machine. REDAC consisted of a about eight very large cabinets. It had a, a rotating disc. It had fixed heads, I believe, and those heads would crash. It was a machine that kind of, I would say, limped along, although it, it was the only machine in town and, and it did a, a decent job of work between when it was commissioned in 1956 and went out of service in the very early 60s. The great need at the time was for real-time processing and in particular, one of the important data needs for real-time processing was to ensure that the rocket would not go off course and uh, hit something that it shouldn't have hit. So the uh, impact to prediction uh, was a task that was badly needed but not provided by REDAC. The machine was reliable initially, it started to suffer breakdowns after about year three or four of its operation. It was replaced with an IBM 7090 which was a remarkable machine for its time. REDAC was a significant machine in Australian computing history. It was the second computer in Australia after CIRAC. Adelaide and Sydney were the two centres of computing in interest in those days. Sydney because its co-location with CSIRO, divisions of mathematics and radiophysics, and Adelaide because of the proximity of the University of Adelaide and uh, weapons research establishment. I knew people who had programmed it, so I heard of it that way. The, um, in particular, a man called John Sanderson was the REDAC programmer guru, and several other people at the University of Adelaide were given access to REDAC uh, as a programming facility. And they included Renfrey Potts, who was a professor of applied mathematics at Adelaide University. Apart from its uh, functionality in tracking and merging data from the range. It also served a, a, a social purpose scientifically in, in, in Australia and Adelaide in particular. And many people who were interested in computing got access to it. And I suppose that leads to an interesting thing that Ovenstone was able to do in that he displayed REDAC at a conference he organized in Adelaide. And that conference goes down in history as being a remarkable turn event in Australian computing history. The Ovenson uh, conference brought together many famous people from the UK and the US and pretty much anybody who was eminent in computing in Australia. It stands out as a significant point in the history of computing in Australia.